My name is Alessandro Vannucchi and I am an associate professor of hematology in the University of Florence, Italy. Dr. Alessandro Vannucchi has published numerous articles in blood, including a recent paper featured in the second edition of the How I Treat Compendium. I'm working in the field of myeloproliferative neoplasms. I was very surprised and very pleased to receive an invitation from the editor of Blood to write this How I Treat. Polycythemia vera is one of the most frequent uh, MPN disorders and it is a disease that is defined chronic. This is one of the first things that you tell to a patient when you make a diagnosis. But we know actually that it can also cause a reduction in the survival of the patient and that it can cause a lot of troubles to the patient during his life. It is a disorder that has been long known, but uh, it is in the most recent years that we, we had very careful criteria for making diagnosis. And this is especially important for patients at an early age of presentation. I hope that this may help clinicians to focus on what is among the first things to think about a patient, about the diagnosis, and the questions one should make on how to deal with the patient. By using the cases, my intention was to, let's say, simulate something that we can see every day in the clinics or something that may be difficult to acknowledge since the beginning. And this was a, a young man who came with this increase of uh, red blood cell. He had been already evaluated by a number of other colleagues and they were unable to, to say anything ab about that, but he had some uh, manifestations of the disease. And then I started uh, everything since the beginning and I reached the same conclusions as my previous colleagues. Uh, so I asked what I could make uh, more than them and uh, therefore I started the more advanced molecular analysis. And I actually found that these patients had the rare mutations in the JAK2 gene that could explain this, this disorder. And this is very important because, of course, treatment is different if you have a true polycythemia vera or if you have an increase of red blood cells due even to other causes that you are unable to find because some patients may have erythrocytosis and even after a, a long workup you are not able to find a, a clear reasons for that. But if the patient has a diagnosis of polycythemia vera, then you know that you have to treat according to the diagnosis. And this is much important to prevent the events. You know, MPNs are a rapid moving field because if you go back to the history of these disorders, until 10 years ago, in 2005, when the first recurrent mutations in JAK2 was discovered, there was really nothing new, nothing exciting, nothing that we could think to improve. Now things are changing because molecular diagnostics is uh, helping us a lot in understanding what is the basis of these disorders. And this, of course, will translate in more uh, in, in earlier uh, prevention, earlier diagnosis, earlier prevention. And of course, we also expect that the promise that we are touching with our hands about the impact of the new class of drugs that are the JAK inhibitors might make some step forward in terms of controlling the disease. And there are also other drugs that are extremely promising this field, such as, for example, the interferons, but maybe also other drugs that act on chromatin remodeling and so on. So it may be that in the next five years, we can really see something changing in all these aspects of the disease. And finally, and hopefully, led to improvement for the management of patients. Copies of the How I Treat Compendium, second edition, are available online at hematology.org 2015 How I Treat or by calling these numbers.